What's going on guys? Justin Fuller, ex Honda salesman, tech lover, today your host. And we're gonna be reviewing the 2025 Honda HRV. That's right, Honda's smallest SUV out there on the market. We're gonna see how this stacks up against some of the competitors and then how is it different from a 2024? So let's hop on in. front of this car you've got a two liter engine putting out 158 horsepower to a cvd transmission out to two wheel or all wheel drive so i'm gonna throw something up on the screen so you can see how does the 158 horsepower stack up against other makes and models out there in the world while it's up on schminey 2024 doesn't matter exact same if you hopped into a honda crv you'd be looking at 190 horsepower so if you jump up to the big sister of this vehicle know there's a pretty decent size difference now when it comes to mpgs this car gets 26 in the city and 32 on the highway I want to throw something on the screen so you can see how does the 26 in city and 32 on the highway stack up against other makes and models out there in the world. While that's up, I'll just remind you, if you are in the all-wheel drive model, you're going to be looking at 25 in the city and 30 on the highway. So just something to keep in mind depending on what you're shopping. Uh, if you're shopping at 2024, don't worry about that. It's going to be the exact same. No difference there. Now, when it comes to front row leg space, sitting in this front of this car, I'm a six foot, 250 pound man, and you've got 41.9 inches of leg space. So I'm going to throw something up on the screen so you can see how does the 41.9 inches of leg space stack up against other makes and models out in the world. While it's up, I'll just remind you, 24 is the exact same. And even if you jumped up to the big sister, the CRV, you'd only get 41.3 inches. So this car actually has more front row leg space than the CRV does. Now, when you jump into the second row, you've got 37. percent seven inches of leg space in the second row it's very usable i sat behind myself with the seat pushed back i still had some space to work with so understand as a larger adult you're gonna be fine in the back but i want to throw a comparison up so you can see how does the 37.7 inches of leg space stack up against other makes and models out in the world while it's up or am you 2024 the exact same however if you did go up to the big sister that crv you'd be looking at 41 inches instead of the 37.7 so kind of something to keep in mind in case you're shopping both suvs now, when it comes to cargo space in the back of this car, with these seats folded up, you've got 24.4 cubic feet of cargo space behind that second row. Very usable, easy to take advantage of. But I want you to understand, how does that stack up against other makes and models out in the world? While it's up, I'll remind you, 2024, the exact same. If you were shopping the big sister, the CRV, you'd be looking at 39.2 cubic feet of cargo space in the back of the car. Now, when you flip those seats down to get the full potential of your cargo space, you now have 55.1 cubic feet of cargo space in the back of this car. So I'm gonna throw some up on the screen so you can see how does that stack up against other makes and models out in the world while it's up i'll remind you 2024 the exact same you get it the theme is there they haven't really changed much right but if you were comparing this to a crv you would have 76.5 cubic feet versus the 55.1 that's in this vehicle so significance there is pretty decent as well now let's talk to you about ground clearance in this vehicle so this vehicle has seven inches of ground clearance now it doesn't matter if you're in two-wheel or all-wheel drive understand that is the exact same so i want to throw something up on the screen so you can see how does the seven inches of ground clearance stack up against other makes and models out in the world while that's up i'll just remind you 2024 the exact same and then if you were in the crv you'd be looking at either 7.8 inches of ground clearance if you're on the two-wheel drive or 8.2 if you were on that all-wheel drive model now, lastly, I want to talk to you about the trim level. So we understand that there is a base trim level, which is your LX, the Sport, which is what we're in, and then above that, the EXL. So we're in the middle model, right? So I want you to understand two things. If I go from the Sport down to that LX, how much money is it going to save me? And then, of course, what is the list of items that I'm going to give up by doing so? So I want you to take a, list, a look at that list and understand, hey, this is what I'm looking at if I drop down trim levels. And then I want to talk to you about going the other way. If I'm in the EV Sport and I want to go up to that EXL, how much extra money is it gonna cost me? And then two, what is the extra list of the items that I'm gonna get for jumping up and spending that additional money? So go ahead and take a look at that as well. Now that you have a basic understanding of if you drop down or if you jump up, this will help you out as far as making an educated decision in case you're shopping for this vehicle. Outside of that, I just wanna say thank you for watching and I have a couple favors to ask you. One, I hope you press the like button because you appreciate the way I present the content. Two, I hope you leave a comment. If you have a question, you have a comment, a concern, or you just wanna say hi, I'm cool with that. So appreciate any comments that you have to leave. Three, I hope you subscribe to the channel so when I produce videos like this, you will receive them. And four, I hope you share the video, man. If you've got some friends shopping uh, Hondas or HRVs or CRVs, this might be something they wanna take a look at and I hope that you'll share it with them. So like, comment, subscribe, all the things. Let it go!